think if anybody anybody wants to start martial arts, I wouldn't limit it to judo. Um, there's a lot of martial arts out there now. I, I do a, a quite a lot of work with the MMA boys. Um, I think the thing that the thing you have to do is be true to yourself and be doing the sport for the right reasons. You know, you, in the sport of judo, you're never going to make any money. You know, it's not like a, you can you can do a couple of years, make a couple of million, and retire. It's, it's not that kind of sport. You do judo because you love judo. I love judo, and when I was competing, I didn't. I loved it because I wanted to be the best. And then I thought, when I retire, I'll never go again. And that's and I, I always believed that as soon as I hung my jacket up, I'd never go again. Now I can't keep away. I have my own judo club in, in, in Rochdale. We have 50 kids, 20 seniors. My mum coaches, my wife coaches now. And I love judo. I come here twice a week training with Steve, with my wife. I go to Cheeto. You know, I love judo. And I think if you're in it for the right reasons, you will stay in judo for, for it's not a it's not something you do for two minutes, it's something you do for a lifetime. I mean, my mum's been in judo for 40 years, I've been in it 37 years, I'm only 43. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's some, Steve's been in it 60 years. You know, you, you real judo people are in it for the right reasons, because glory and the medals, that fades. That does fade that, and I never, I'm sat here telling you about all my achievements because you're asking me, but I never, I'm not like that. I'm not, I don't go, I'm Simon Jackson, Olympic judo, that's not who I am. I'm a good coach now. I know that I'm a good judo coach because we have 50 kids and half of them kids probably don't know what I've won. They will do because the parents will probably tell them, but I don't tell them. You're only as good as what you do now. So I think if you want to stay in the sport and you want to achieve something, don't live on something you did last week. Live on something you did now. And if I go on that mat in, in another half an hour and I have a bad night and I don't throw at a lot of people, that's where I'm at. Can't live on 20 years ago. I was best in the world 20 years ago. Nobody could touch me. Nobody could even get near, people were scared of fighting me, but time moves on. So you're only as good as what you can do now. So as long as you're true to yourself and you, you try your best every single time you step on that judo mat or in the cage or in the boxing ring or whatever you do, whatever you do. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a learning mentor at school and I tell my kids, you know, I, I play the piano and I've got a, a girls singing group. And I tell the girls, you do your best when you go on that stage and sing. Nobody can ask anymore. And as long as you, you do your best every time you go on, you won't go far wrong. There's two types of pain. There's a the training pain and the competition pain. Competition pain, you never feel it. There is no, there is no pain in competition because you can fight. I fought a guy in, in about 1993 called Gerard Rollo and they did a flying arm lock um, technique and I'm sure it should have been banned, but it wasn't banned. Anyway, I get to the final with this boy and he was a new wonder kid, this boy. And it was, it was all like the French were thinking, he's going to be the first man to beat me. Anyway, we started fighting in the competition and he arm locked me with his flying arm lock. And I didn't know, but he dislocated my shoulder. But I still beat him with a dislocated shoulder. Because when you're in that, in, in that situation, you don't feel pain. It doesn't happen. I've seen, my, I've seen my wife go over and fracture her ankle in a, in a grading for a black belt. She carried on fighting. You know, I've seen my mum when she was 40 year old, she was fighting like 20 year old girls and they were dishing pain out to my mum, but she didn't feel it, she carried on fighting. And that's because that's the competition pain. You don't, your adrenaline's, your adrenaline's pumping, you're going for it, and if that will to win, fight or flight, you're gonna fight. Training pain is totally different. You have to put yourself into that pain to get fitter. So there's often been times when I've been in the gym doing leg press and stuff, because you need, you need powerful legs to be a judo player. But I've been sick straight after the, straight after the training. Um, it, I did a bit of cycling and you do lactate tolerance test and you sit on a bike and there's a, you have a bin at each side of the bike and that's to be sicking. Because you're building that much lactic acid up, you're being sick in that bin and then your lactic acid tolerance will go up the next time you do it. So training is a lot harder to actually inflict the pain on yourself than competition. Because in competition you're there You've got to do it, or you get beat. There's no, there's no. But in the gym or in the training, you could think, ah, oh, I'll turn up tonight. I've had a bad night. Can't really be bothered. Train at 50%, and that's what that's what separates me and the Olympic champions from all the other people who do martial arts. Because I didn't. Every time I went on that mat, I went to a million mile an hour, and I thought it was the, in my head it was the Olympics. Every time I went on the mat, it was the World Championships. Dishing out pain to other people. I said it earlier in my argument. Now, as a coach, I wouldn't teach my, my, my students to be that brutal. But when it comes to competition, it will be. Because that's the nature of the sport. 
it, it's a hard game, Judo. It's not, you know, it's a gent it's called the gentle way. And I don't know, I don't know, give it that name because it's not, it's not gentle. But it's one of those sports that there's a lad called Steve Ravenscroft, and he'll watch this on the internet and he'll go, Wish you'd not mentioned me. He's about, f yeah, he's about 10 years older than me. And uh, me and Steve, if you ever saw us fight, he's a side to judo player, he was British judo champion at my weight category. We'd just go for it. When I first met my wife, I took her to judo. And you try to impress her when you first meet your girlfriend. You think, I'll take her to judo. <laughs> Don't know why we're thinking about that. And she seen me fight, Steve. And she was quite worried because me and Steve, he's got a bald head like me, same sort of build. And we just go for it. And if there's a wall there, we'll go into it. If we're off the mat, we'll just carry on. As soon as Steve says, Matt here, shake hands, probably have a hug. And we're best mates. And that's, and that's what the essence of judo is. You can go at it for five minutes with your best mate and proper go for it. Me and Steve, we proper go for it. Still now. Still now, we, it's not died. So if we walk on the mat, it's all right, Steve, good night last night. Yeah, I went out for a couple of beers with my wife. Yeah, so did I. Yeah, right, Ray, a Jimmy, boom, focus, fight. And we're on it. And that bit clears the mat because we're just like two animals going at each other. Matt's here, sorted, good fight. Like, yeah, he did all right though. Yeah, not bad, yeah. Done. And that's what it's all about. That's why I love it. Because you can proper, you can proper, you can have a tear up and then you can shake hands and, and be best, and not be best mate. I'm best mates with Steve. I weren't best mates with anybody to fight in, in the Olympics because that's just not right. But you still shake hands and you've still got that mutual respect for each other. When I was competing, it, it is a full-time job. Um, you can't really have another job as compete because we do two hours judo a day, um, two hours weight training a day, which could be circuit training, power, cleans, squats, chins, bench, all the power exercises. And then obviously you've got to get your cardio in as well. So we do, we do sort of five to 10K runs every day. Because don't forget in, in judo, it's a weight cast sport as well. So I used to fight 73 kilos and I used to sit naturally at about 77, 78 and didn't have any fat on me. So you're losing five kilos of, of muscle and just stripping your body down to the bare bones really. Um, so you're very big and strong in the weight category. So it, six days a week, you would have a day off. Um, and you had to travel. The thing with judo is to get the best practices, you have to travel around the country because Monday nights might be great in Coventry, Tuesday nights might be great in Scotland, Wednesday nights might be great in Birmingham. That's just the way it is. If you're not prepared to travel um, in judo in Britain, you know, you're not going to make a good judo player. In Japan, you don't have to travel. They've got, you know, two or three hundred on every time you go on a judo mat. There's at least hundred on every judo mat in Japan because there's more people doing it. It's a minority sport in Britain. You have to travel. My, my dad used to drive me up and down this country doing judo. He'd, do, he'd, have, he'd have a full-time job. He'd come home and drive me everywhere. We'd go to Kendall for a night, which is two hours from us. He'd get home at five. We'd set off, 719 judo, drive home, and he'd be back on the road at seven in morning, six in the morning. Commitment, you have to commit. So you can't really have a full-time job. You have to be 100% committed life to your sport. I am a fitness freak, I love training. I love being in the gym. Um, me and my wife got tandem. Um, my mum's got a house in Spain and we've got a tandem over there and we, do, we regularly do 100 mile bike rides in a day. Um, I love doing the weight training and stuff. You know, I'm, I'm quite vain, I like the body to still look good. I only weigh about 78, 79 now, so I'm still within my fighting weight. Um, I'm a big believer that Steve Pullen made a, a deal with me. He said, when you're 40, son, you will be 100 kilos. Because what happens normally is judo players retire and just eat. So I'm, I'm always keeping under that. I'm nowhere near that. that 100 kilos, Steve, I'm nowhere near. I'm only 78. Um, so I just keep, I keep training. I'm a, I, I do a lot of judo still because I love the game. And, you know, you, you keep yourself fit. And not because of the, the health benefits. I just, I love training. I love putting myself in pain still. I often still put myself in a world of pain. There's nothing wrong with that. You, you, you always know what character building, as Steve would say. And you always know where you are if you can put yourself in a world of pain. And I, and I still enjoy doing it. I was really honoured in 1996. I got awarded uh, the MBE for my services to judo. And so we got invited to Buckingham Palace and my mum got to buy a big hat and some white gloves and stuff like they do. And when we went there, it, they're all lined up and you have to walk across and you shake hands with the Queen and then she pins the medal off on your chest 
and then when she's you know had enough with you she grabs your hand and she shakes your hand and then you walk off so I saw that there was people going on and you know getting their MBEs and stuff and they were only on for two or three seconds so I thought right so I walked up she shook my hand I put my hands behind my back she pinned the medal on and she had to talk to me then because she couldn't get me hand. So she was like asking me where I was and stuff and what I'd done for judo and stuff. So I had a bit of a, I had about 20, 30 seconds instead of five, shook her hand and walked off. And then later on we were studying the, um, sounds really posh this, but it weren't. We were studying the courtyard of Buckingham Palace. And there's a lot of people getting their MBEs. It's not like what you think it is. Like you, you've got people services to caravan and getting MBEs and lollipop lady from Scunthorpe and stuff, you know. So you sort of feel like, yeah, it's all right, this. But anyway, when I was getting mine, um, Paul McCartney was getting his uh, knighthood. Now, everybody was just taking pictures of Paul McCartney. And they were like, there's about five or 600 people getting awards and friends and family and bloody press and stuff like that. Anyway, me and my mum and dad and my brother were stood at the end, just stood in the car park, just sort of taking it in really, because you don't, you don't get to stand in the courtyard at Buckingham Palace every day. And then McCartney just started to walk over and the crowd sort of parted. And it was one of those moments where you're sort of looking behind you thinking, who's he going to? And he came up to me and he said, seen you on telly, quality, shot me by the hand. And I went, oh, cheers, pal. And, uh, and I said, can I photograph with you? He went, yeah, I know. He's like, so he put his arm around me and I said, he said, hurry uh, up before I wrestle him to the ground. And I just turned around and went, you don't think so, do you? And he went, no, no, not really. Anyway, so my mum took a picture, you know, got a picture, like, brilliant picture with Paul McCartney. And he came up to me, I didn't go up to him, I weren't a fan, and he was my fan. Brilliant. So we get home, this is the day, be this is the time before, you know, uh, camera phones and all that, you know, you have films in the cameras. Apart from my mum who'd forgot to put film in the cameras. So I didn't have a, you know, I didn't have, I didn't, I got a picture with Paul McCartney and it's not a lie because my mum can vouch for me, but she forgot to put the, uh, the film in the camera, so we didn't have an actual picture, but Macca did come up to me and shake me by the hand, so it's, uh, that's a bit of a claim to fame, I think. <laughs> yeah, if he's watching, can we have that oh, picture? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the intensity of training and the way that, Steve was talking before and stuff is how he treated the visual impaired judo players and, and we were treated no different than, than any other judo player and we went training in Cyprus and the lad I was talking about before Steve Ravenscroft he was my training partner so he came out with me now he would run about two foot in front of me no yeah about two foot and I could follow him I could see enough to follow him and we were running down the road in Cyprus and I was about two foot behind him and he went over this like a little Car, you know, a, a, a side street coming out, and I just followed, and this woman ran me over. <laughs> she just backed right into me and knocked me off my feet. And Ravo just turned around and went, "Get up, Si, and let's carry on." <laughs> and that's what you carried on doing when you did judo. It was, it was ruthless, and you weren't treated no different as a visually impaired person than anybody else. You get run over, you get up, you carry on training, and that's, you know, that's what just we have to do. <laughs>